In this program demonstration, I'm going to show you how you can use arrays with loops to initialize each array element to a value, set each array element's value to a value entered by a user on the keyboard, display the array element values, find the largest value in an array, copy the array values from one array to another, print the array element values backwards from the last element to the first element, and then finally display all values in the array that are greater than a threshold value. I already started this program and created two integer variables, max and sales goal, which I'll be using later on with some of the later items that I'm going to show you. So let's begin by first creating a variable for our array. I'm going to create an integer array named sales, and it's going to hold four values for each of the quarters in a year. So it's going to be an integer array with four values. Now before I create the array, I'm going to create a named constant with the number of values I want this array to hold. And then when I use my loops, I'll reference this name constant each time I'm iterating through the array. So I'll begin with the name constant. And by convention, we often use all capital letters with a name constant. So I'll call it periods in all caps. And I'm going to set its value to four. Now when I declare the array, I'm going to use the name constant instead of an integer literal for the number of elements. I'm creating an integer array, so I'm going to put the data type of int. Then the name of the array, I'm going to call it sales. And then finally, in square brackets, I'm going to indicate how many elements this array should hold. I will put periods right here and then finish it with a semicolon. Later on, I'm going to copy this array to another array, so I'll go ahead and declare that array as well. I'll just put it on another line and I'll call it the new sales array. It's going to have the same number of elements as the first array and the same data type. Now that we've declared our variables, I'm going to begin by initializing every value in the sales array to a value of zero. That way I have a valid integer value in the array for each element before I begin to use the array. So whenever we're wanting to use a loop with this array, a for loop is a great option because with for loops, we'll often choose them when we know how many elements or how many iterations we need. So in this case, I know how large the array is. That's going to tell me how many times I want to iterate through the loop. Now for loops a good choice. I don't have a variable declared yet as my iterator, so I'll just define it right here in my for loop as an integer data type. I'm going to call it i for iterator, and I'm going to initialize it to zero. Why zero? Because the first subscript in an array is zero. And when I run a reference element, the first element in the array, I'm going to use subscript zero. How long do we want this loop to iterate? I want it to iterate as long as my iterator variable is less than the number of elements in the array. That's where my name constant comes in, periods. And then finally, each time I iterate, I want to inter increment i. And with this, you can put the plus plus operator on either side of the i.
and then we can build the body of the for loop. Now with this for loop, like other for loops with arrays, I only want to execute it as long as i is less than periods. And that's because the subscript of the last element in this array has a value of 3. Once i has a value of 4, I don't want to continue the loop. There is no valid element in the sales array with a subscript of 4. So by running it from 0 up to 4, that's going to allow me to have values of 0, 1, 2, and 3 for my iterator variable corresponding to the four elements of this array. Now once inside this for loop, I want to set the value of the current element to zero. So I'm going to put the name of the array sales, and then because we're working with a single element, I'm going to use the square brackets and I need to indicate which element I want to manipulate. The letter I, or the iterator variable, is a great choice for this because that value is going to be modified each time the loop executes. So I'm going to put I as the subscript for the element I want to modify. And then it's just a matter of giving that element a value of zero. Once that for loop finishes, finishes executing, then all four elements will have a value of zero. Another way we can initialize this array is we could get values from the user. So let's do that next. It's going to be similar to what we did with initializing the array, but this time we're going to be using cn to get an integer value from the user. The heading of my for loop is going to be identical to the last one, so I could use copy and paste if I wanted, or I can type it again. Now oftentimes when we want a value from a user, we'll display a prompt so the user knows what we're looking for. Otherwise, the user will just see a blank screen with a cursor blinking. So I'm going to first display a prompt. So I'm going to send a message to see out that just says something like enter a value. Then I can follow that with cn. And what value are we wanting to modify? It's just like we did in the other loop. It's sales with a subscript of i. So the first time this loops, loop executes, we'll be manipulating the value in sales subscript 0. The second time, sales 1, and so forth and so on. So now that we've put a couple of items in this program, I'm going to stop and test it. I won't be able to see what's inside the array yet because I haven't put the part in the program that displays the values, but I can at least see if it's compiling successfully and executing successfully. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to run this outside of debug mode by saying start without debugging. All right, when I compile the program, I can see that I'm getting a few warnings because I have a few variables that have been declared and haven't been used. But that's okay because I'm planning to use them later. That's not going to cause a problem. So I'll go ahead and dismiss this output. And I can see now that the console window is requesting a value from me. So I'm going to enter some values here.
And it looks like this program is successfully executing that loop four times to ask me for four values. Now again, I don't have a way to see if I'm correctly populating the array, but I can at least validate that the program is compiling at this point, and this loop does appear to be executing or iterating the correct number of times. So now let's go ahead and add the part where we print the array. That's going to give us further validation that this program is working. Printing the array is going to look a lot like the other two loops, except instead of modifying an element's value, we're going to be displaying it. So once again, I will use the same for loop header, i equals zero, i less than periods, and I'm going to increment i each time I iterate through the loop. What do I want to do in this loop? I just want to display the values on the screen. So I can say C out, and then I need to access one particular array element. The current element, again, inside this loop is going to be sales i. And I think I'll go ahead and put a line break after that so that I don't have all the numbers just running together on one line. It also might be nice to display a message on the screen before I display the values, just so I know what I'm looking at. I'll add that up here before the for loop. And something like that. The fact that I'm displaying the sales array, or I could make it look like something a little bit fancier. Though that'll work for now. Let's go ahead and compile and test this program with this change. I get the same warnings that I had last time. And I'm going to enter some values here. This time I'll have higher values. It doesn't really matter. I'm just making things up. And right, so there are my four sales values. As soon as I press enter, I'm going to exit the loop where I set the values from the user. And now I'm going to display the values in the sales array. And it looks like I'm seeing the correct values. The four numbers that I typed are the same four numbers that were displayed on the screen. At this point, we know our program can successfully populate an array by getting values from the keyboard from a user, and it can successfully display the values back on the screen. So we know we have a valid array, and we can start doing some new things with that array. I want to next find the maximum value in this array. So let's add a comment here about what this section of the program is doing. And to find the maximum value, I'm going to use the variable max that I created earlier. So when I first started this program up here at the top, I created an integer variable named max. That's going to hold the largest value of all the elements in my array. And we're going to work with that now. I did not initialize max at the time when I created it. Now I'm going to initialize max, and I'm going to set it to the value of the first element of the array. Now there's nothing special about this particular value. This value may or may not be the maximum value in the array, but I need to set max to something before I begin, and I might as well set it to the first value. Now that max does have a value, I can compare it to the value of all the other elements in the array and see if there are any other elements with a larger value. So I'm going to create my for loop header again. But this 
time I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to initialize I with a value of one. Everything else is going to look the same. And I'll come back to why I set it to one in just a moment. Now that I'm in the body of the for loop, I need to compare the value of max to the value of the current element in the sales array. Now I'm going to do that with an if statement. So I want to see if the current value of, or the current element's value, that's sales subscript i, has a value greater than max. And if it does, then I'm going to replace max's value with the value of the current element. If the value wasn't bigger than max, then I just won't do anything. I'll let the loop go to the next iteration. Once this loop is finished, then I'll display the maximum value that I found. With something like that. So let's go back to that for loop header. Why did I begin this for loop header with a value of one for i? Every other time I have used zero for i's initial value, why am I using one this time? Well, if you look at line 39, what I'm doing here is I am setting max to the value of the first element. I am now, because I have set max to the first element's value, I don't need to look at that element's value again. So in a sense, I've already processed that one. At this point, I just need to look at all the remaining values. So that would be elements with a subscript of one and beyond. So what this loop will actually do is it's going to execute one less time than the total number of elements. Let's test this program and see if this is working. And this is one of those things where I might want to test it with entering the largest value first or the largest value last or in the middle or something like that, I probably want to test a program like this in multiple scenarios. All right, so, and I'm going to get rid of this little box here while I'm at it, just so you can see all of the code there together. So this time, I think I'm going to make the third value the largest value. Okay, 1,000, 1,100, 1,200, and 900. The sales array is displayed back to me, and it looks like the program thinks the largest value is 1,200, the third value in the array, and that is the correct value. Let's test it with another item. This time, I'm going to make the largest value the first element. So I'll put four different values in here. And it looks like it's also correctly finding the largest value in this array of four sales values. If we were wanting to find the smallest value, we would do something very similar. I would have a minimum variable. I would need to initialize it to something, and then I would compare every element to that minimum value. If I found an element with a value smaller than the minimum, then I would replace the minimum's value with the value of that element. 
And so that's how you can find the largest or the smallest value of a series of numbers in an array. Now that we can populate the array, display the array, find the maximum value in the array, let's copy the array from one array to another, or copy the each element's value from one array to another. Now most of the time when we're working with different variables, we can do something like this. We can say new sales equals sales. If I want a variable's value to have the value of another variable, I can usually use the assignment operator and I can then copy what it's on the right hand side over to what's on the left hand side. This, however, is not going to work with arrays. Let's go ahead and try to compile this. And it's immediately going to fail. And the error that I'm going to get here it says array type int 4, meaning an integer array of four values or four elements is not assignable. So building the project failed. So we cannot just copy an array by using the name of the array and assigning it the values or the name of the other array. And what's really happening here is whenever I reference the sales array without a subscript, I'm referencing the memory address of the first element. And I can see that if I display If I attempt to display the sales array like that, when I go to run the program, I'm going to see a memory address, not any of the values in the sales array. So I'll run this program here, put in, just put in the same value four times. And I can see right here that when I try to display the sales array, I get this gibberish right here that represents a memory address. So if I were to try to assign sales to variable new sales, what I'm really doing is I'm trying to assign the memory address of sales to the new array. And that's not something that's possible. We're going to have to do this a different way. I'll just say not allowed. And I'll leave that in here. Readdress. So we're going to get, once again, use a for loop to iterate through the sales array and copy the values element by element to the new array. So we'll put our standard for loop header in here. And then what I can do is I can take the new array with subscript i, meaning element i, and assign it the value of the old array with the same subscript. And so I can use that variable i, the iterator variable, as the subscript for both of the arrays. Now when this for loop executes, I'm going to go through all four elements in the sales array and copy each one to the four elements in the new sales array. And if I wanted, I could then follow up by printing one of the values from the new sales array. So let's say I want the second value out of that array. I can say new sales 
And then I'm going to have to put a subscript here. Now, if I want the second element in the sales array, what is the subscript for that? It's not subscript two because we began counting with zero. So instead of a two, I'm going to put a one right here. And that's going to allow me to see if it has the same value as the old array had for that same subscript number. Well, let's test this program change. So I'm going to enter some numbers here for my array. And I'm going to find that first, the largest value in the array was 1100. There's the memory address of the array. And then finally, looking at the new sales array, element number two, has a value of 1100. I can look back up at my sales array and that does match the second element in the original sales array also had a value of 1100. So it looks like those elements copied okay. Now every time I have worked with my sales array, I have always iterated through the elements from the first element in order to the last element. But I don't have to do that with my for loop. If I wanted to, for some reason, print the last element first, I can just change the way my for loop is processing the, the iterator variable. So I'm going to use a for loop again, and I'm also going to use my iterator variable i. But if I want to print the last first and the first last, I'm going to initialize it to the subscript of the last element. Then that's going to be periods minus one. What will my test condition be? I want this for loop to execute exactly four times or as long as I is greater than or equal to zero. And then finally, I'm going to decrement i's value with each iteration. So what I'm seeing here is I'm starting at the last element subscript, periods minus one, and then I'm going to reduce i's value by one every time this loop executes. And as long as i is greater than or equal to zero, I want this loop to continue to iterate. So with this for loop heading, I'm going to be iterating through this array four times, which represents the four elements. Now it's just a matter of displaying the current element with a C app. And displaying the element or working with the element inside the for loop isn't any different than what it had been before. The current element doesn't really know the order in which we're looking at them. Before I test this also, I think I will display another comment on the console window or I'm going to start getting confused about what I'm looking at. Let's even add an extra line break here just to set this off a little more. And I'm going to say sales array printed backwards. So let's test this program change. We need to first put values in the array do this in a way where both screens show okay. And I'm going to actually put them in numeric order so it's a lot easier to see that they're printing in reverse order. I'm just going to say 11, 1000, 1100, 1200, and 1300. There's my sales array printed in order. My largest value is 13. 
the new sales array's value number two is 1100. And then here, when the sales array is printed backwards, I can see that the 1300 prints first and then so forth and so on all the way until I get to the very first element with a value of 1000. So that appears to be working. Another thing I can do when I'm iterating through this array is I can decide to print all the values that are greater than a particular threshold. I had created another variable for this, and that's up here at the top, variable sales goal. I want to ask the user what the sales goal was for each quarter, and then I'm going to print the values for each sales period that equaled or exceeded the sales goal. And I probably should have put a comment here about what I was doing here. Print array backwards. All right, now, print sales periods that meet or exceed goal. So I need to know what my sales goal is. The first thing I'm going to do is ask the user for the sales goal. That makes the program more flexible than if I had just typed it up at the top. So I can prompt the user first by saying, enter the quarterly sales goal, and then use my CN statement to get the value from the console window and save it in the sales goal variable. Now that I know my sales goal, I can use the for loop to iterate through my array and compare each of the elements values to the value of sales goal. So let's scroll this down a little bit here. And I'm going to use my standard for loop heading to examine each element. All right, so when I'm in the body of the for loop, I'm looking at one particular element in this array, and I'm going to compare it to sales goal. So we'll create an if statement. If sales goal greater than or equal to sales subscript i, that means we have met our goal. Well, what do I want to do if I've met the goal? Actually missing another closing brace here. Let's, there we go. All right, so if I have met the goal, then I'm going to display something about that. So I can say, see out goal met in quarter, and then I could display the number of the sales period. How do we know what sales period we're in? Well, we have an iterator variable i. So I can put that in there and display it like that, as well as display the value of the sales array. Now, is this going to give me what I want? Well, it's almost going to give me what I want, but it's not quite right. Well, let's test it to see what happens. And see if you can spot the problem in this code. So I'm going to enter some values here. I sold 1,050 the first quarter, 900 and 975 the second quarter, 1100 the third quarter, and then I didn't do so well the fourth quarter. I only sold 850. 
The rest of the program runs as we expect. And then the last thing here at the bottom, my console window is asking me for the quarterly sales goal. My quarterly sales goal was $1,000. So I'm gonna put 1,000 in here. And then what I wanna see is that the first and the third quarters are displayed because those two quarters have exceeded the sales goal of a thousand dollars and when I print this here I'm gonna see that it says that the goal was met in quarter one of 975 and it was met in quarter three of $850. But let's look at the values in this array. Quarter one had a value of 1050, not 975. And quarter th um, three had a value of 1100, not $850. So these numbers don't really match up. Additionally, this isn't even correct. I don't want to see that, um, I don't wanna see these values, I wanna see the other two values. So let's go back to the program and see what we need to modify. All right, so we have two problems, one, the quarter number looks a little weird. And then two, we're displaying the sales periods that didn't meet the goal. So let's fix that problem first. Let's look at the if statement. If sales goal greater than or equal to sales. Well, in its essence, I've made this statement backwards. So what I'm gonna do is I can either put a less than sign here instead, or I can reverse the flip-flop the two variables, probably less typing if I put a less than sign. So now what we're saying is if my sales goal was less than sales I, and yes, it's less typing, oh, I think it's kind of a backwards way to write it. So probably instead of being totally lazy with this, I'm gonna fix this by just flipping these around and stating it the way that we naturally think about. So if the sales array with subscript I has a value that's greater than or equal to sales goal, that's the reverse of what we had put in there before. Let's try running this. I'll put in four values. I don't remember which ones I had before, so I'll just go ahead and put in, well, let's do one that's exactly a thousand, and then 1100. How about that? We'll have three quarters that exceed a sales goal of a thousand dollars. And now it says enter the set quarterly sales goal. Let's put $1,000 in as our sales goal. I'm gonna press enter. And now I am seeing the correct values for the sales numbers. I'm seeing the 1010, the 1000, and the 1100. And that's good. But I'm also seeing that the quarter numbers are wrong. I'm seeing that the first one is showing a value of zero for the quarter number. And if I can get this arranged so they both display on the screen, that might be a bit much to ask. All right, that will do it. It says goal met in quarter I. Well, the first element in an array is numbered element zero. And so for the computer, that's the first element. But for us as humans, we don't think like computers. It really makes more sense to say that that's quarter one and not quarter zero. So instead, what I'm gonna do here 
is I'm going to add one to I. And this is getting a little long, so I can press enter and just let this statement wrap around to the next line or by pressing enter. That way I can see all of it on my screen easily. And another thing I noticed was that I really need a space before this dollar sign. So I'll go ahead and add a space here while I'm at it. And let's run this program again. Oh, I'm going to put my four values in once again. Um, 1,975, 850, and 1,200. Had a really great fourth quarter. Now I need to enter my quarterly sales goal of $1,000. And now what I'm going to see is output that looks correct. It says that I met the goal in the first quarter, quarter one of $1,000, and I met the goal in the second quarter, I'm sorry, the fourth quarter of $1,200. Looking back at the values I entered in my array, 1,000 was the first value for quarter one, or subscript zero, and 1,200 was the last value I entered for quarter four, or subscript three. So this now looks like it's working correctly. And this shows you why it's so important to test your program to make sure it really does what you think it's going to do or what you want it to do.